Moon Knight is amazing. At the time of recording, there's only been two episodes released, but it is on track to become the best Disney Plus MCU show yet. It is, in a word, but it's not without its flaws. And there is one very extremely head-scratching detail in the first episode that we need to talk about. And no, I'm not talking about Oscar Isaac's, uh, let's say, possibly extra British accent. BBC One has already addressed it magnificently. The accent is having fun with the old... There's, there's a slight bit of Oliver. What you staring at? Little bit of please sir, more sir, just a squidge. How dare you? Please sir, I want some more. Come, come on, I mean, just a, 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 a tiny... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Deep breaths. No, for this, I'm speaking of after Oscar Isaac's character Stephen has been ambushed by Arthur in the museum when he leaves. First off, I want to say the detail of the museum security guard being a part of Arthur's gang (laughs) is perfect. Not only for its surprise, but because it makes so much sense. If Arthur ever needed to yoink an Egyptian artifact to satisfy his needs, his goals, his quest, you'd need an inside man, baby. So that was perfect. I loved it. But the issue comes after Stephen leaves. He completes most of his shift, if not stays extra into the night without doing anything else after running away from Arthur. I mean, he has seen this guy kill. He has been chased, shot at. He has exhibited that he is willing to ask for help. Why would he then go and clock in? He could go out to the police, say, there's a murderer here. Check the cameras. That's another thing. In the second episode, maybe they should, you know, check the cameras for Arthur and have it be glitching or something. But that's that's not a big deal uh, because the most important detail of that is the jackal chasing him which does not show up on cameras because it is invisible. So that's a minor detail. But for this, all you would have to do is add a 30-second clip of Steven running to the security desk, telling the security guy who always calls him Scotty. Scotty doesn't know that Fiona and me do it in my van every Sunday. Telling him that there is a murderer in the building and that who's the guy? The security guy is part of their group. And have the security guy walk up and say, ah, ah, keep, keep, keep away, keep away, protect me. And like hide behind him and then say, look, look, look on his wrist. It's a, there's a gang tattoo on there or whatever. And have the guy show his wrist. And have nothing be there. I've got a couple tattoos, some have I had. But have it not be there. You could explain it any number of ways. It's a magical tattoo that can disappear if necessary. You you could have him peel it off as soon as Steven's away, like a fake skin or whatever, you know, something that covers it up. Basically, what you need to do in that moment to get Steven to stay at the museum is make him feel crazy. Gaslight him. I'm, I'm, I mean, in personal life, I'm against gaslighting people, but this is what needs to happen if you want him at the museum at that later scene. Have him feel crazy. That's what this whole show and great shows like Crazy Ex Girlfriend do get you to understand someone's headspace who, prior to learning, you may have called crazy. You need him to feel like he's imagined it so that he pipes down and doesn't continue to ask for help. And the more you ask for help, the more you begin to sound like the boy who cried wolf. <sighs> and goes back to work. So that is what was a very glaring issue when me and my co-host Brad were reviewing the episode. It's really, I think, the only thing we had an issue with in that first episode. We can look past it. I mean, there have been much more giant 
uh, leaps of logic, like in Falcon Winter Soldier, when Bucky Barnes in the second episode just traipses his way onto a military airfield and just goes onto a plane, even though they're going into an active war zone for a mission. That makes no sense. We turn a blind eye. We say, you know, I understand this was in the middle of COVID. You had to change the whole freaking plot, yada, yada, yada. We can acknowledge the faults and appreciate what it does well. But this was so simple. It would have taken 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. If you want to listen to Brad and I's continuing weekly reviews of Moon Knight, that link is down below. It's at anchor.fm forward slash I love you 3000 reviews. And I'll see you for the next fixing video. What do you think about Moon Knight? Like, this is really freaking good, right? I'm not even primarily asking you to put comments down below and tell me what you think. Uh, for like SEO or algorithm, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I actually just really freaking love this show. I almost said movie because let's be real. This is going to be like a four to six hour movie in reality, how it's unfolding. And I just want to geek out about it, man.